I'm uh, the blockchain developer of Litecoin, and I'm working on the, uh, our blockchain called Litecoin Chain, which is a Cosmos SDK based blockchain. So my topic is connecting some uh, connecting Cosmos SDK based blockchain to IPFS. And this talk is a uh, bit, uh, is this sharing is basically a very quick introduction of uh, the pre, uh, case study on uh, which is now on the IPFS documents thanks to the IPFS team. Uh, so uh, if you want more details, you can read the uh, read the case study. Yeah. So let's get started. So. Uh, First, uh, let me introduce what is uh, Cosmos SDK. Uh, Cosmos SDK is uh, an SDK uh, not developed by us, but by the Cosmos team, uh, which is for easily developing application specific blockchains. Uh, it provides many uh, modules that are many blockchains would like to have, for example, uh, defining uh, a token or uh, having governance or having a uh, staking so that uh, the blockchain can run on a proof of stake. So, uh, and then developers can uh, make their own uh, modules so that uh, for the uh, for the functionality of their own blockchain so that uh, it is called an application specific blockchain, which the application is actually the, the application logic of what the developer wants. And uh, here are some chains that is using Cosmos SDK, uh, the Cosmos Hub, which the token is Atom, uh, and also the Binance chain. Uh, this one should be quite famous. And also uh, IrisNet and Band Protocol. These are some famous uh, blockchains using, uh, based on the block Cosmos SDK, so they have similar interfaces. And uh, yeah, they have similarities on their code base too. And of course, uh, our blockchain, Litecoin chain, is also defined, uh, also uh, developed uh, based on Cosmos SDK. So uh, you can go to the Cosmos website for more uh, details on that. And for our blockchain, Litecoin chain, uh, it is a blockchain uh, specified on content related functionalities. For example, we define the token Litecoin, which is uh, distributed to uh, distributed to content creators in order to reward uh, content creators. And uh, currently, uh, we're developing a function called ISCN, which is uh, called International Standard Contents Number. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. If you go to the library, uh, you will uh, read books, you will notice that uh, the books all have uh, ISBN, International Standard Book Number. And we borrowed the idea and want to generalize it for uh, all contents on the internet so that people, uh, content creators, like video creators or uh, writers who write articles uh, can register their content and their content metadata uh, on our blockchain. And then as uh, given, our, given an ID for their content so that uh, others can distribute this, uh, can recognize it uh, attributes the contents by this ID, uh, just like the uh, the ISBN that you can search and or identify a book using the number. And then, uh, if you have, uh, we have content metadata storing on chain. Therefore, we want to uh, we want it to be uh, more uh, searchable and accessible from uh, everywhere anywhere on the internet. So we think that IPFS is a great network for distributing this data. So that we think that uh, if if uh, if we can use IPFS to access uh, the ISCN metadata, then that would be a good idea. So uh, we would like to uh, we would like to implement this idea through the uh, plugins of IPFS. Uh, the main implementation of IPFS is Go IPFS, and it supports plugins. Uh, basically, there are two types of plugins. Uh, one is data store, which defines how to uh, store or load data, just like, uh, for example, which backend of database is uh, are being used. To, by default, it should be level DB, which is a very quick database, anyway. And another type of plugin is uh, IPLD plugins, which defines how to interface data 
uh, actually previous speakers have already talked about uh, how they use uh, IPLD or expand it. So uh, I think you understand that maybe more, even more than me. <laughs> so uh, we made two plugins for that uh, for our purpose. One is the uh, Cosmos D which is uh, a data store uh, cur uh, for querying Cosmos SDK data. Uh, originally, we want to embed it into the blockchain uh, so that it can share the database with the, uh, block, uh, with the blockchain code so that you can directly read the blockchain, just like uh, the blockchain database, just like uh, when you're using level DB, uh, level DT DB data store, it will directly read the level DB. But we find that uh, in Cosmos SDK, uh, these database assets are actually assumed to be a kind of single thread so mm -hmm. that uh, it's not quite possible to share the database instance with the plugin without, uh, say, breaking the locks or concurrent access limitations. So uh, then we think that uh, we need to be more generalized so that, uh, so that uh, if it less intrusive and then and uh, module implementers of the module developers of the Cosmos SDK could be uh, could be uh, easily in, uh, easily using our plugins so we decided to use uh, the the RPC endpoints provided from the Cosmos SDK which is a mechanism that uh, you read from the blockchain so uh, now uh, the Cosmos D data store it will be reading data from uh, Cosmos RPC endpoints. Another one is ISCN IPLD, which uh, which is an IPLD extension for uh, parsing IC, uh, ISCN related data stores. Uh, this is the URL for the yeah, IPFS plugins. Uh, for the introduction to IPFS plugins, if you uh, if you are interested in that. So uh, basically, this is our architecture. On the left hand side, we have a Cosmos SDK based blockchain. Say, for example, our Litecoin chain, it will have some modules. Each module will expose their own RPC endpoints. And uh, our module, ISCM module, will expose some specific endpoints for, uh, for, the, Cosmos data, uh, for the Cosmos data store plugin. Uh, mainly it's exposed three functions for uh, querying if a data exists on uh, on the blockchain, the size of the data, and also the data, and finally the data itself. And then on uh, on the IPFS side, uh, when a, uh, the plugin, uh, uh, the main plugin will be Cosmos D, uh, which is the Cosmos data store, and uh, when someone query either from remote or locally, uh, CID it will first uh, analyze the CID to see uh, to see if the type is actually the type of the CID is actually a Cosmos SDK uh, or Cosmos SDK one, and if so, it will uh, process uh, it will process it through the RPC endpoint so that it will query the uh, it will call the uh, specific endpoints defined by the ISCM module or uh, so that uh, so that it will retrieve the CID raw data from the uh, from the blockchain, and then uh, if it's not a CID, uh, not the data that that is from Cosmos SDK, then the request will be simply forwarded to uh, to the basic uh, level DB plugin. And after that. Uh, if it is a local request, then uh, maybe the user needs to uh, wants to pass the IPLD data so that so the CID data will be uh, passed by the ICN IPLD plugin so that it will be a uh, human readable one, and then the response is given to the user. So uh, as you can see, it's uh, basically a very simple architecture that um, actually it does not involve many Cosmos related stuff on the uh, on the data store side. So maybe it should be called, uh, I don't know, IPFS HTTP data store or something like that. So our target is to uh, be least intrusive for both uh, Cosmos developers and IPFS uh, users. So for IPFS users, ideally they 
uh, they just need to compile the plugins and then install them on their uh, IPFS clients, then it could be used, then it will be usable uh, after some configuration. And for Cosmos SDK module developers, not only for our blockchain, uh, they only need to have uh, defined a few extra endpoints for uh, exposing uh, for exposing their contents, uh, their contents through the RPC endpoints, and also defining their data uh, through the CIDs, uh, defining the CID formats of their data, which is the RPTLD part. Then, uh, then after that, it would be possible for them to uh, to uh, to make their blockchain data accessible through the IPFS network. Also, this architecture is uh, simple enough for generalization. For example, if it's not uh, for SDK module, uh, Cosmos module data, but for the block data or transaction hash, then we could easily uh, implement that uh, in the data store part, uh, just queuing the endpoint defined by the Cosmos SDK themselves. And as I've said, it's also generalized for uh, different Cosmos SDK modules. So not just our own blockchain, uh, not just Litecoin chain can access it, but also other blockchain, uh, other developers can use this, uh, can use this method to make their data accessible through IPFS. So uh, this is basically what I want to share about uh, our, our Cosmos uh, SDK plugin for uh, IPFS plugin for accessing Cosmos SDK based blockchain. Uh, as I said before, uh, if you uh, if you're interested in Dash, uh, you can you can have a look on the uh, case study, which is quite detailed. And also, if you are interested in uh, Litecoin, you can go to Lite.co for to uh, which is our main website. And our code base is in, uh, in on GitHub. You can search Litecoin, and then you can see our repositories. Yes, yeah, that's quite a lot actually.